going on, everyone? So the Lakers and Christian Wood have been heavily speculated, especially yesterday. You really saw these reports starting to kind of ramp up about Christian Wood very likely going to the Lakers. A lot of that had to do with uh, certain things that Rob Palinka said. We talked about they're actively looking for another center to kind of round out the roster. And the center in which he described that they're looking for kind of fits Christian Wood to a T. And Christian Wood would be great, right? And I am on the record saying I hope that it happens, right? If you can get Christian Wood for a vet minimum, you do that. You do that immediately. Now, I do want a veteran center. I do prefer somebody, you know, just like a DeMarcus Cousins or something like that. Uh, A big sort of burly type guy that can just kind of bang, but also understands the deal, right? You're here, be a vet guy, be a locker room guy. You know, you'll get some sparing minutes here and there, uh, but more so just to have that vet guy that you can trust on, on a late game possession or something like that, more so for the playoffs than the regular season. But if you can get Christian Wood, you go get Christian Wood, right? Talent trumps everything. He is more than enough talented. He is the best option out there. Uh, yes, he's not this huge burly center, but he's still 6'10", 214 pounds, and just a very talented player, right? I mean, the guy averaged 16.6 points per game, 7.3 rebounds, and 1.8 assists for the Dallas Mavericks. Um, Now, the big issue and the big concern is not his efficiency. It's not his effectiveness. Um, You know, he shot 51% from the field total, almost 52%, shot almost 38% from three, and he shot almost 60% from the field uh, in two point range, right? So this is a guy that has an EFG of 58.3%, a good free throw shooter for a center, a guy that is a legit three and D for or three level scorer for a center position. The D part, (laughs) not so much, right? That's a big thing. But I do believe that Darvin Ham, um, can at least get him to be serviceable, right? No, I don't think anyone expects him to just become this elite defensive guy, but at least come in and be serviceable. Uh, There are a lot of question marks with Christian Wood, but he is a guy that makes sense for the Lakers because he has this perception and this reputation behind him right now that has affected him. If he goes to the Lakers, he buys in, he does what he needs to do, and he performs to the level that is asked of him, then I do fully believe that he will get a real contract next season, right? Right now, everyone's kind of just skeptical. They're like, hey, we'll give you a vet minimum on a a flyer, on a prove-it deal, right? But what destination would be best? I think Miami makes a lot of sense, right? Because the heat culture and stuff like that. If he can go to a place like that and fit in, I think you get the same thing. But Miami doesn't get the same shine that the Lakers get. The spotlight isn't as bright as it is with the Lakers at the stage. Now, if Damian Lillard goes to Miami, then maybe that changes a little bit because the coverage for Miami is going to be a lot broader, right? A lot bigger. Um, But if he went to a place like the Lakers, like I think Christian Wood needs the Lakers more than the Lakers need Christian Wood. But the concern is, would Christian Wood be worth it? Now, Before we dive down this rabbit hole here, because I do think it's a real question. I believe the Lakers should sign Christian Wood. I am of the camp and of the mind of like, hey, yes, go get Christian Wood. He is talented on a vet minimum. It's low risk, high reward. Get it done. But there is a real argument that the Lakers should stay far away from Christian Wood. Primarily one is that the locker room issues, the character issues, Right, The Lakers seem to have a very quality type roster right now with a bunch of good character guys and a, a place that everyone should fit in seamlessly and there shouldn't be any drama. There shouldn't be any mess. Right, And this is a team that is legitimately trying to compete and contend for an NBA championship. But Christian Wood comes in, does he become the disruptor? Does he end up having a problem if he only plays 10 minutes one night, right? Or he doesn't start or something like that, right? I do think with the Lakers culture that they have established, right? Darvin Ham is a great coach, a player coach, a guy that convinces players to run through a brick wall for him. I mean, that man convinced Russell Westbrook to come off the bench 
and play defense when nobody thought that that would ever happen. So I believe that he that Christian Wood would come in and have some structure, right? LeBron, I fully believe that LeBron would provide some structure. Maybe you still go get like a DeMarcus Cousins or somebody like that that can be that enforcer, right? Be that guy that can be the a-hole if you need to kind of like put Christian Wood in line. Not saying Draymond Green Christian Wood, but I'm saying like, you know, like, hey man, like we're not we're not playing that today, you know, like that kind of guy, right? Um, but beyond the whole locker room and character issues, because I don't think that that would be a big concern. I think the biggest concern is two things. One, Rui Hachimura. Is Christian Wood going to go to the Lakers and be okay with not starting? And if he does, how many minutes does he play on a regular basis off the bench? Right? Rui Hachimura. The Lakers just gave him $17 million a year and really believe that he's ready to take that next step. Are they going to say, well, now we're going to bring you to the bench because we're going to have Christian Wood so we can move AD to the four or whatever, or run that two big lineup and then have LeBron at the three? How are you going to go about that? Is that something that happens? Do they go like super big and they put you know LeBron at the point? Then does that become a problem with D'Angelo Russell? Does that become a problem with Austin Reeves, right? Because one of those two means very likely has to go to the bench. So either Reeves, D'Lo, or Rui are going to have to be off the bench. And during the course of the regular season, it might not be that much of an issue, right? Because you can keep LeBron's minutes down. You can keep AD's minutes down. Uh, LeBron and Anthony Davis are probably going to miss 30-plus games anyway, right? So... I think you'll you'll find minutes and you'll find things here and there, but when you get to the playoffs, you know, like, does that start becoming a problem, right? Does Ruby go, man, like, look what I did for you last playoffs and now I'm only playing 15 minutes a game. Or Christian Wood gets upset and now you have a problem, now you have an issue. It's, it's something that at, at least is worth a conversation. Something that is the least worth the discussion. Now, if everyone buys into the team aspect and the team idea and the culture and the fit and everything, and like, hey, our goal is to win, whatever that is. Hey, Wood, you don't got it tonight. Rui does. We're going to ride with Rui, right? Or we're going to have LeBron play the four and Bando at the three because of matchups or whatever, right? Like, if that's something that, that he's okay with and he buys into, then fine. But... That's always easier said than done, right? Everything's always good and copacetic, although winning does trump everything. But, you know, once that that, that leak or that jealousy or whatever starts coming and rearing its ugly head, all of a sudden, things can flip rather quickly. The other thing is, too, is that where does Christian Wood fit outside of the five, right? So here's the problem. So you get Christian Wood, you have Jackson Hayes, you have Anthony Davis, right? Like, let's say you just solely keep AD at the five or at the four, right? And you just go, let's say you start Christian Wood and you have Hayes off the bench or vice versa, right? Maybe you tell Wood like, hey, you're going to come off the bench, but you're going to play heavy minutes. We're going to start Hayes and we're going to start AD and you're going to come off the bench. You're going to be the first big off the bench for Jackson Hayes, and you're still going to play, you know, 25, 30 minutes a game, right? We'll even run some sets with you and Hayes, but, you know, we want to go with, like, Hayes, the bigger guy, the rebounder guy, and then you kind of be the first big off the bench. Maybe he's totally okay with that, right? But if you play AD full-time at the four, and then LeBron ends up playing the three full-time, essentially, how do you fit in the rest of the perimeter guys? Right? Like that's the the Lakers are stacked at the three and the four. Right? Like, think about it. You have Jared Vanderbilt, you have Rui Hachimura, you have LeBron James, you have Torian Prince, you have Cam Reddish, right? Like, and that's not even counting like guys like, you know, Lewis, who's a rookie, which not a big deal, but Max Christie, right? Does he take the next step? And yes, guys like Max Christie or Torian Prince, they could take, they could play the two. Okay, so let's remove them. You still have Rui Hachimura, Jared Vanderbilt, uh, uh, Cam Reddish, right? Like, it's just, you still have several guys that all need to find minutes, but LeBron's going to play 30 minutes at the small forward, 
And then you're going to have Anthony Davis play 30 minutes at the power forward. And then you're going to have the five spot be divvied up between Christian Wood and Jackson Hayes. Again, does that start to become a problem? Does that become something where the roster goes, you know, look, and Darvin Ham's going to have to figure this out regardless, whether you bring in Christian Wood or not. And again, I am of the mind of you bring the talent in and then you figure it out, right? So I'm not saying personally that no, you should not bring in Christian Wood. But if you were to bring in like a Bismack Biombo or somebody like that, would they be more understanding tonight's where it's like, hey, tonight you're not going to play. Tonight you're going to have a DMP, right? I don't think you could do that for Christian Wood, right? Can you do that for Jackson Hayes? Maybe, right? And yes, the nights that LeBron James and Anthony Davis take off, then that kind of helps a lot, right? Because now you can go, okay, well, Wood, you're going to start at the four, and then you know we'll have Rui, and now, now you can kind of divvy up guys, and, and all is good. But the games that LeBron and AD play, how do you get the minutes for guys? Now, maybe Cam Reddish, right? Maybe he's a guy that he's kind of like the odd man out because they're kind of developing him this year. And then now you just got to kind of find minutes for... For Vanderbilt and Rui at the at the three and the four, but are they going to be okay with like fifteen minutes a game, right? Are they going to be okay with DMPs. And again, that's if you you play Prince at strictly the two guard, right? Max Christie, right? Like, does he just okay? Sure, right? It just it, it could become a problem. Darvin Ham is already going to have to figure this out, right? Because you already have a incredibly deep roster where you can make an argument for all of these guys to get rotation minutes. And the the two spots that I think are less jam-packed currently is the two guard and the center position, right? But again, the two guard I think you can solve by just putting Prince who's 6667, he can easily play the two plus 38% three-point shooter, right? So you don't really lose anything there. Um, and then also you have, like I said, Max Chris, so you can play him at the two. He's looked really good in summer league. Even if you're kind of like iffy and you're like, hey, we don't want to give him heavy minutes this year. You got Reeves starting, and then you could always play D'Lo at the two um, because of his ability to shoot and stuff. Cam Reddish, you could even play at the two wet spots. But again, it's just, it, it's it's something the Lakers are going to have to figure out regardless. But it could be a issue. And a lot of that still ties back and stems to Christian Wood being a locker room problem. Now, does he come in and his agent say like, look, dude, if they tell you you're not playing tonight, you're not playing tonight and I don't want to hear a word, right? Like this is your last chance because this very likely could. I'm not saying that he'll be completely out of the league because he is very talented, but this could be his last chance of proving that he's worth more than a vet minimum. If he does go to the Lakers and that ends in a disaster, and there's all these reports coming out that he's causing locker room issues and they're trying to win a championship and blah, 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 and he's kind of like throwing a tantrum and whatnot, well, then that really that, that could end up being the, the sort of nail in the coffin for him as far as like ever getting a lucrative contract. Because now at this point, you know, teams will still take a chance on him because he's talented, but they're not going to give him more than a vet minimum, right? They're just It's just not going to happen. So he has a lot to prove, but is he willing to buy in? Is he willing to accept it? And does it become a problem? In the end, is, is Christian Wood worth what may turn out to be a bit of a storm, right? But anyway... As always, this is a discussion, so I pass the question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Again, personally, me, I think you do it, and I think you figure it out, but some people might feel otherwise. I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions either way down in the comments.